Thanks very much, Doug. Can you hear me okay? So, uh, yes, I'm Alison McKay from Hibernia College, and um, as you can see, there were five of us involved um, in this project, and myself and Rob are here to present about it today. Um, so, as it said, the morning after the party, um, we thought we'd make things a little bit interactive, and some of you may have seen a little card like this on your table. Um, if you haven't, you might uh, have a search for it there. No? And that will give you a login to our LMS, which is called MyHelm. So it's myhelms.com. It's my higher education learning management system. Um, so we've given you um, a unique login there so you can have a look at how we've used the, um, the Level Up plugin to increase uh, social presence through gamification on our online orientation course. So that's what we're going to be talking about uh, this morning. So um, if, you, if, you, if you've found a little card on your table, um, you might go to another table if you can't find one. It's myhelms.com. And if you just uh, log in with the details there and then click the Study Now button and then go to the course Increasing uh, Social Presence Through Gamification, and that will, um, that will take you into a few little activities uh, related to what we're doing today. And it'll give you a chance to see if you haven't used uh, the Level Up plugin, what it looks like in practice and how, how we implemented it. So, um, have you anybody managed to log in? Yeah? Great. Super. Okay. So, uh, just to say a little bit about Hibernia College, um, Rob spoke yesterday, some of you may have heard him, some of you may be familiar with us. Um, we provide two um, master's uh, courses in teacher education in Ireland, one in primary and one in post-primary, and these are blended learning courses. Um, so uh, they're, develop, they're delivered 55% uh, face-to-face and 45% online. So naturally, with a blended course, there are always issues around um, students feeling isolated and the importance of getting students connected to each other. So this is very much part of our online of our, or of our orientation program um, that uh, we try to get, uh, get, get students uh, connected to each other early on. So our orientation program is uh, two weeks long. Um, it starts um, with one week of online activities. So the students get their login on a Monday at the beginning of the two-year course, um, and they have a number of different activities that they uh, have to uh, carry out in the course of that week. And then on the Saturday, they've got a one-day workshop with lots of interaction and um, uh, lots of exercises. And then they have another week of online activities afterwards. So we, we had our orientation actually just last Saturday. Um, so our students are now working through the activities in week two. And the activities are a mixture of presentations, videos, quizzes, um, uh, forum posts, and uh, things like uploading a mock assignment. So it's, it's on the one hand, it's to get them familiar with their learning management system, to get them familiar with processes in the college and get to know what they're going to be doing in their program. But it's also very much aimed at making those connections between students really early on so that they have, um, so that, they have that peer support and they have that um, right through their program for, for, for peer learning and to build a community of inquiry. And the community of inquiry uh, framework is very much at the heart of our pedagogical approach at Hibernia College. So there's a very strong emphasis on social interaction in the online orientation. However, what we find is that where students will engage quite well with um, the exercises and the videos and so on, and they are very engaged at that in, in those first two weeks, there can be a reluctance to engage in the activities where they're actually reaching out to another student and connecting. So those kind of activities would be, say, forum discussions. Um, we have a, a glossary exercise where they learn about each other. Um, and. Uh, blogs and so on, where they're, where they're expected to, to make contact with each other. Um, so what we decided to do was to, um, to create a little bit more motivation for students to actually engage in that kind of social interaction, peer-to-peer -peer interaction. So we decided to uh, try adding a gamification element. So there's been a, a quite a bit of talk about gamification at the, um, at the, the moot so far, um, but just as a... Um, as, as, a, as a definition, um, Tara Brigham defines it as the use of game, uh, game-like activities or game elements. 
uh, in learning. So I do, do, would you mind putting your hands up if you're somebody who, who has played video games? Okay, so I expected a fairly strong showing. <laughs> um, so if you played video games, you'll be familiar with XP points or experience points. So as you move through the game, you earn points, and as you earn points, you move up levels um, in, uh, uh, in a series of, of levels. And we used uh, the Level Up plugin for this. So um, how did it work? Well, we identified uh, a number of activities um, that required students interacting with each other, and we awarded points for, um, uh, for engaging with those activities. Now, how exactly we did that, for that part, I'm going to hand you over to my colleague, Rob. Thank you, Alison. Hello, everybody. As Alison mentioned, we chose to use the Level Up plugin. Um, for any of you who were here on day one for Mary Cooch's gamification workshop, she used that and she was talking about that um, as well. And uh, it's, it's a really, really great plugin. I mean, there are a number of gamification plugins available. Um, Stash is another very good one. Uh, but we were really drawn to Level Up just because of what it could do and the amount of kind of rules and conditions you can set in the plugin to award points for uh, a, a very simple set of events or a very complex set of events. Um, there we go, and that's the block there, and it's maintained by Fred Massar as well. Uh, there is a plus version, which gives you some additional features uh, for, for a small price, but we used the free version, and we found that absolutely perfect for our needs. So what exactly was involved in setting up and using the Level Up plugin? First of all, we needed to identify the actual events in Moodle that would award points. So we didn't gamify our entire online orientation course. We only gamified the elements where we wanted students to reach out and, and connect with one another. So first things, we needed to identify those Moodle events. So things like uh, posting a, a discussion forum post, uh, subscribing to a, a discussion thread, um, creating an entry in a glossary to, to tell people about each other, etc. We then needed to devise well, the scoring system, so how many points would each of these events be worth? Um, now, the, the plugin can do it automatically, but we wanted to have a kind of a bit more control over it and define the levels and the points ourselves. So we just looked back at previous logs of our online orientation, figured out what the average student, the amount of um, clicks or events they, they would have had on the various different activities, and we worked backwards from that to identify different levels and different points that would be awarded for the different events. Um, and then lastly, we, we branded the block. So the block itself, is, it, it, its default settings are quite colourful, uh, but we wanted to brand it, make it kind of look and feel like a Hibernia College uh, plug-in and, and fit in with the overall theme of our online orientation. Um, so as you can see there, those were the levels. We chose five levels. We um, um, had our, our, our wonderful designer, Stephanie, design uh, very nice visuals for it, uh, and we defined the points and the levels in the settings. Um, we also then devised um, the, the, the course rules, so the, the different conditions that would award students points. And here's where the plugin can get really, really powerful, and you can start putting in some very complex um, sets of conditions if you wanted to. But we kept it quite simple, and we just kind of chose some of the, the, the main events associated with forums and, and glossaries and so on. Um, and then, as I say, this was the, the, the branding that we, that we did. So the, the, the default settings are already quite colourful and quite interesting, but we wanted them to uh, fit our own uh, theme and our, our own look and feel. Some of the things we did, we activated the cheat guard in the plugin. Um, so this um, prevents students from, uh, I suppose, uh, cheating in the sense of just, say, refreshing the page over and over again to, to earn more and more points. Uh, so we only wanted genuine players in this game. Um, and then we also made a, a decision to turn off the leaderboard. So um, some, some, some proponents of gamification like the leaderboard and like the competitive element. We were concerned that perhaps a leaderboard would demotivate students, and, and particularly this is the start of their program um, for most of them the very first time learning online. So instead of um, using the leaderboard, we had our student support officer send out motivational blurbs to um, different students who are at, at different kind of stages of, of the game. Uh, and this is an example of some of the motivational blurbs we sent out. So these, uh, so for the people who were who were kind of top of the leaderboard, uh, they, they they got a, a motivational blurb uh, telling them to keep up the good work. For anyone around the, the middle of the range, uh, we kind of just prompted them to maybe continue what they were doing and just telling them where they were in the game. 
then the kind of the low and the non-earners got kind of a bit more robust motivation and 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 were you know they were they were encouraged to reach out for help if they needed it if they were having any difficulty uh, and and we were kind of we, we linked to the on-site orientation day as well and then the blurb for the non-earners was 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 quite similar as well so i'll hand you back over to alison thanks very much rob so um after the orientation we um we did some analysis then um, of uh, how the impact of the tools. So we did uh, quantitative and qualitative analysis. Uh, so in our um, our programs, we have two intakes per year. We have a spring intake and an autumn intake. Um, so we had a look at the engagement with those activities where the, where there was peer-to-peer -peer interaction. Um, in the, the September 18, which was just passed where we did it, and, uh, and with previous cohorts. And as you can see there, there was about a 50% increase in engagement in those activities, which, which was very positive. Um, you'll see that April 18 is a bit of a blip. It went down quite, quite a lot, and that was because the orientation program was released late to students. So we're uh, hoping that will be a, a one-off. Um, and uh, as our students are just about to finish up, um, we'll be going back now and looking at the spring 19 and seeing um, how, they, uh, uh, how they got on with it and, 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 and how the trend developed, but certainly very encouraging initially. Um, so looking at the, um, the qualitative data, um, so we, we, we put two new questions. We survey our students every year before and after their orientation. And the, the questions stay the same uh, every cohort, so it allows us to get a good sense uh, of, uh, of, of development. But we added two questions this time, uh, specifically related to the gamification uh, tool. And the first was a, was a Likert scale question, um, presence of the connect, earn and learn, uh, connect, learn and earn, <laughs> block. Uh, so we called it the um, the theme for the orientation was connect and learn. So we made a connect, learn and earn. And that's one of the questions there uh, if you have logged in. <laughs> so don't listen to me. Look at what's on the slide if you're if you're answering the quiz question around that. Um, so as you can see, um, People agreed with that. It was about 84% uh, strongly agreed or agreed that it um, that it motivated them. Um, we also put in an open question, what are your thoughts on the, on, on the block? Um, and that was, was overwhelmingly positive. The, the main sentiment that arose was motivation. You kind of see if you look there, we get motivated, motivating, motivate. Um, so there was a lot of talk about motivation. Um, so it was, it was largely very positive, the feedback. And I'd just like to give you a couple of examples. So I found it to be a good motivational tool. And as both a shy and mature student, I felt it aided me in pushing me out of my comfort zone. And that was exactly what it was that we were trying to achieve. Um, and this student says, um, it, it gave um, a sense of achievement and, um, and helped, helped them to interact with their fellow students. And this last one as well I thought was quite interesting where um, they say, it encouraged me to communicate with people before the on-site orientation day, which I probably would not otherwise have done. This helped me to make friends on the day as I had already communicated with them. So this, we were very, very happy with, with these results. So there was a small minority um, that were not as positive about it. They felt maybe that it was a little bit childish. So here's just an example. I didn't particularly enjoy it as I felt I was being forced to respond to someone just to earn points or go up a level. I'm not one for responding to things or getting involved in a discussion unless I feel I have something important to say, which I thought was quite an interesting point. There was talking a little bit um, yesterday about um, lurkers. I think it was Stephen Bruce was talking about lurkers. And I think, you know, sometimes there's, there's, very, there's, a, there's, a, there's a motivation behind somebody not actually wanting to, to contribute, that it, it is reasoned. So where do we go from here? Um, the, uh, what we'll be looking at next is um, our April 19 intake. Um, and also what we're going to do this time around is we want to look a little bit deeper into why it motivated students. So we're going to have some focus groups with our, with our April 19 students to, to, to dig a little bit deeper into that. Um, so that's it. Rob has been looking at uh, at the results to see who's been engaging and. Uh... Yeah, yeah, we have. So we have we have quite a few people up at level two, level three, level four. But our, our top three earners in today's session are login 27, whoever that is, uh, with 575 points. 
at login 25 with 950 points, whoever that is. But the person in top place with the, with the whopping 1,700 points is login 19, who has well exceeded level five. So congratulations, whoever's using login 19. So you may, um, if you if you complete that, you'll also be able to see how we set up that leaderboard just now for for, for this particular demo. So that's it. If um, if there are any questions. <laughs> Um, I'm interested in how you, you're going to accommodate those who don't particularly like that sort of approach. I mean, I, I suppose you're saying it's more, uh, most students are positive about it, but I think it's interesting how we tailor <laughs> a sort of that um, to those who don't really want to participate. Or... Yeah, well, it is entirely voluntary. So yeah, there isn't any, um, there isn't any penalty uh, for not getting involved yet. I um, just wondered whether you thought it worked particularly well for the students you're working with, with them being educators and finding it interesting to see different tools, or whether you think it would work quite universally for anybody working at that sort of level. I think, I think, yeah, I think, I think that could have been a, a contributing factor, possibly. I mean, the, these were coming on board to, to start training as primary and post-primary teachers, so they may have had an interest anyway in, in in these kinds of tools, and and this way of learning. I think that's certainly yeah. possible. Yeah. And I suppose anything that we introduce, we're always introducing it with an eye to modelling best practice and you know letting them see what's out there as possibilities for educators. Yeah. I think using it as a tool to get them to engage peer to peer is. Fantastic, it's such a great idea. So yeah, thank you. Thanks. Hello. Any more questions? Going once, twice. Okay, well thank you very much to you, Alison.